so good for us to be together once again. While we may be social distancing and we're learning to do new things, we can certainly be thankful that we live in an age where we can still get together and where we can still worship with one another. I think it would be safe to say that this is not your typical Holy Thursday or Monday Thursday, whichever one you prefer to call it. This may be the first time that the church all around the globe has not been able to get together. And knowing that this is not a typical Thursday, I think can really help us understand what it was like on that Thursday evening when Jesus remembered the Passover with his disciples. It was not your typical Passover. I'd like to share with you the scripture this evening from Luke's account, and I would encourage you to read all the accounts and to actually read more than what we read together this evening. But in Luke chapter 22, beginning in the 14th verse, we read, When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Let's pray together. Oh Lord, as we come before you on a night that is not typical, we ask that you will open our eyes to the events that took place on that holy Thursday night when our Lord Jesus Christ met with his disciples in the upper room. I come before you and I ask, O oh Lord, that you would cleanse me of all of my iniquity, that you would make me a vessel that is clean, fit for your use. I ask the anointing power of your Holy Spirit. I ask, Lord, that for each one that is listening this evening, that your Holy Spirit will work in their hearts and in their lives. Lord, we're experiencing much of the same thing and yet we're all experiencing it differently. You know what it is we need to hear from you this evening. And so may your Holy Spirit speak to each and every one of our hearts. And it's in that precious name of our Lord Jesus we pray. Amen. When we think back to that Thursday evening, I imagine the disciples went to the upper room thinking that this Passover would be like all the other Passovers. After all, why would it be any different? Every Passover they have known throughout their life has been the same. Every year 
it was the same. Even long before they celebrated it, they knew they were celebrating the Passover just like their grandfathers and their grandfather's father, and you can go on down the line. This was a tradition, and you don't mess with a sacred tradition. It's been this way for a long time, and so why would this evening be any different. Every year, it would be the same question. Of all nights, why is this night different? And the answer, it was the same answer year after year. And they would tell the Exodus story. And they would hear the story of how their forefathers had been in bondage in Egypt for over 400 years. And how God miraculously delivered them with a mighty outstretched arm. They would hear the story of the ten plagues. And then especially the final one. Of how their people were commanded every year to select a male one-year-old lamb that was perfect. And that lamb was to be sacrificed. And the blood was to be placed over the doors and on the sides. And they would remember that first Passover. For that night, the angel would pass throughout the land. And if any home did not have the blood, the firstborn male would die. But when the angel came, if there was blood over the door and on the sides, the angel would pass over. And they knew the story of how every one of God's people were spared. And yet there was great wailing in Egypt. It was the same story, told in the same way, year after year. In fact, it was the same meal. Even the meal itself was designed to tell the story. It was the same four cups. Everything had been the same. It was called a Seder, which simply meant order. There was an order to remembering the Passover, and that order never changed. So why would this night be any different? Little did they know how different this Passover would be. It long to realize this was not to be your typical perhaps their first clue was when Jesus got up from the table he took a towel and a basin and he began to their feet or perhaps the best clue that they experienced was when Jesus told them that he had had an intense desire to share this Passover with them. Now, this isn't the first Passover that Jesus has celebrated with his disciples. And so why does he have this intense desire for this Passover in particular? I mean, after all, the Passover is a big deal. But why is Jesus making this one even more important. What is it about this Passover that it's not going to be your typical Passover? And then Jesus says something strange. He has this intense desire to share in this Passover 
He said, before I suffer. This has been looking forward to this particular Passover. He's been looking forward to it for a long time. And it may be that they're thinking, okay, we've been with Jesus for three years. And now Jesus is preparing them on this night. When you read the accounts in the Gospels, Jesus had a lot to say to his disciples that evening. A lot of instructions to give them. And in fact, he wanted to give them even more than he could. But he acknowledged that they were not able to. To bear it. But this is what he's been preparing them for. And now on this evening he wants to prepare them. For what will follow this Passover. But as I think about it. It may be that Jesus has been anticipating this Passover even longer than that. It may be that he's been anticipating this Passover for 33 years. It could be that just before the incarnation took place and Jesus knew that he was coming here in the flesh on that same night when the angel said, today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And so now that time of how Jesus becomes our Savior is at hand. And so perhaps he's been looking forward to this for 33 years. But when I really think about it, I imagine that it goes back even further than that. It probably goes back to that day that wasn't so typical in the garden. Adam and Eve are living in a paradise. And then lo, it happens. They both eat the forbidden fruit. Sin has entered into the world. And it was on that day that God's plan of redemption began to unfold. And it may have been since that very day that Jesus was anticipating this particular Passover. It's now time for the fulfillment of God's plan of redemption. And even though Jesus has plainly where he will be arrested, where he will be condemned, and where he will suffer and die. And yet the disciples have not been able to wrap their heads around that. They just simply have not been able to come to the place of accepting it. And Jesus knows what's coming. And he explains to his disciples that this will be the last Passover that he will participate in for quite some time. He said, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine again until the kingdom of God comes. This Passover really is different. This isn't your typical Passover. And right at this moment, the disciples, they just don't get it. I think when you look closely at Jesus' statement, he's indicating that all of the Passover we're looking forward to this particular moment. Every one of them has been a foreshadowing of this Passover. 
every Passover lamb that has been sacrificed for the last 1,400 years was pointing to Jesus, our Passover lamb. The one that John identified right at the beginning of his ministry as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now, this is not your typical Passover. And following that, Jesus took the bread. And when he takes it, and he broke it. That's typical. But what he said wasn't typical. There's not been one Passover that these disciples have been to that they'd ever heard the words that Jesus would now speak. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And right now with that moment, the disciples, they just don't get it. But after tomorrow, Friday, they will understand what Jesus meant when he said, my body given for you. They'll understand then that Jesus was instituting something new. That from this day forward, when you come together for the breaking of bread, it's to be done in remembrance of him. And right now, the disciples they just don't get it. But after tomorrow, Friday, they'll know we're to remember Jesus gave his body for us. And then Jesus took the cup. It was most likely the third cup of the evening. There were four cups in the Passover. The third cup was the cup of redemption. And so when Jesus takes the cup, that's typical. But the words that he spoke were atypical. He says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And now that cup of redemption The old covenant had been filled with the blood of a lamb. But this new covenant, it would be established with the blood of the lamb of God. And right now, at this moment, the disciples, they don't get it. But after tomorrow, Friday, they will know what he meant when Jesus says, my blood, which is poured out for you. And so here we are, nearly 2,000 years later. And just as that Passover wasn't typical, in some ways this Holy Thursday is not typical. And the question that I think we really need to answer is, do you get it? The disciples didn't get it that evening. But do you get what's taking place here? Jesus is telling us, I'm taking the hit for your sin. It tells us we've all sinned. 
Every one of us. It says there's none good, no, not one. And then it tells us that the wages of sin is death. And so Jesus is saying, I'm going to take the hit for your sin. It's what theologians would call a substitutionary atonement. When we sin, we have violated God's righteous, holy law. And when you break a law, you have to atone for that law. And so God said the only way that it can be atoned for is through death. And so Jesus says, I'll be the substitute. I'll take your place. I'll take the hit. And I'll pay for your sin. Do you get it? That's what this is all about. That God loved us and sent us simply so that we could be forgiven and enter into a right relationship with Him. Tonight, we will do exactly what Jesus called us to do. We will remember that the breaking of bread and the drinking of the cup. And before we do that, we need to remember that the scriptures teach us that we are not to partake in an unworthy manner. Now, that means basically two things. The first one is very simple that when I partake in this meal, I'm doing exactly what Jesus said. I'm remembering that the bread is his body, which was given for me. When I drink the cup, I'm remembering that his blood was poured out for me. And so I don't take the moment lightly, but I truly focus in on Jesus and what he's done for me. But it also means that when I come, I'm to examine myself first. And if I find that there's sin in my life, then I need to deal with that. And I need to deal with it honestly. And so I need to confess that sin. And the Bible says that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness. I know over the years I've seen Individuals who, when it comes that time, they know there's sin in their life and so they don't come to partake. And that was never the intent. The intent was to examine ourselves, to repent of our sin, and to confess our sin. It's intended to bring us closer to Christ not to keep us from him. And it may be that you're watching this evening and you've never come to that place of making a commitment to Jesus Christ. And it's an invitation that comes from him. The invitation that says, do you believe that I came and that I gave my life to ransom yours? Do you want me as your forgiver? 
one who paid your sin debt? Do you want to yield your life to me as the one who will govern over your life? And it's acknowledging, I haven't done so good. I need to turn my life over to the leadership of Jesus Christ. And so it becomes an invitation from him. And so this evening as we prepare to partake of this meal, you need the elements that hopefully you've prepared in advance. If you saw the post, if you haven't done that, then I would invite you to come back later after you've prepared those elements. And so on that final evening, when Jesus met with his disciples, he took the bread And he blessed it. Oh Lord, we thank you for the bread that came down out of heaven. Not as our fathers ate and died, but that whoever eats this bread lives forever. We thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ bread of life and then he broke it after that he took the cup and he blessed it Oh Lord, we know that your word teaches no forgiveness. And yet it also says that it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away our sins. Oh Lord, we thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who poured out his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And then Jesus invites us to partake. So this will be a wonderful time for you to share that with your family after we close out this part of the service with prayer you may continue the service at home. Oh Lord, we pray that on this evening that we will realize just what you have done for us. Speak to us O oh Lord, and it's in that precious name of our Lord Jesus.